I mean, talked about Othello a little bit. Now we have to go back again because Shakespeare takes us there in, in Act Two to talk about Iago. Uh, after Othello uh, wins or persuades the Duke of Venice and the court that his, his military skill is, is more important than Brabantio's political skill and that, and that his marriage to Desdemona is legitimate, uh, Shakespeare leaves Rodrigo and Iago on stage together. And Rodrigo, of course, is despondent. And this gives us a real good look at Iago. Iago says, oh, you know, kind of stop crying. This is, sorry, this isn't act two. This is act one, scene three. Um, uh, I, I'm, Rodrigo says, I will uncontly drown myself. I will cry myself to sleep, 308. Oh, don't be silly, says Iago. It is silliness to live when to live is torment, and then have we a prescription to die when death is our physician. Rodrigo is, is over the top in his emotions and his love for Desdemona. And Iago chastises him here with some very interesting language. Oh, villainous, I have looked upon the world for four times seven years. I know you're English major, some of you, but four times seven is 28. I have looked upon the world four times seven years, and since I could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury, I never found a man that knew how to love himself. Ere, before I would say I would drown myself for the love of a guinea hen, I would change my humanity with a baboon. Rodrigo, what should I do? What should I do? Uh, it's against my virtue to amend it. Iago, virtue of fig. Tis in ourselves that we are thus are thus. Our bodies are our gardens, to the which our wills are gardeners. Iago is giving you something of his world philosophy here. Uh, you know, yes, we have these natures in us, the, our emotions, our passions, line 332, but we have reason to cool our raging motions, our carnal stings, our unbidden lust, whereof I take this that you call love to be a sector scion. In short, what Iago says to Rodrigo is, we can control our emotions through our reason and our rationality and put on acts and perform. So you acting silly about your emotions controlling you just isn't true. Uh, a, a couple of things there. Uh, and, and I'll just give you a general, general remark about a big concern. Um, this is a play in many respects that you in modern language might call domestic violence. And when we talk about domestic violence, we talk about crimes of passion. That is, bad things happen when people let their passions get the best of them rather than their reason. We say this all the time. Um, but in this play, it's interesting to note, Shakespeare gives the villain, Iago, a speech that embraces not the indulgence of passions, but embraces reason and rationality's ability to control the passions. That flip-flops our standard understanding of things, right? Uh, one of the things I'm going to try to suggest to you throughout that this is this is not a crime of passion that takes place in this play. It's not a play about crimes of passion. It's a play about crimes of reason. We'll get back to that one. Uh, for this tutorial, though, I want to go back to this particular passage where Iago says, uh, since I have been four times seven, since I'm 28, you know, I've known this. And if we pause for a second and actually take in this speech, it should be a little bit jarring to our ears. Because what Iago is doing here is dispensing life wisdom. And generally we're accepting of life wisdom if we get that advice from someone who's 94, right? When someone says, hey, I lived 94 years, I've been through this, this is how you stay alive. You might want to listen a little bit if their wits are still there, right? They've got some experience on their side. But if someone says to you, hey, I, look, I've been around. I'm 28. Um, you might want to pause. 28 isn't exactly what one would call mature, even in Shakespeare's lifetime, okay? Um, so I want to pause and ask you to think about that. I, this is where I'm, online teaching is great, but I miss being in the classroom discussion. What features are particular to the age of 28? I suspect many of you are fairly close to that. Um, in other words, Shakespeare is big on the ages of man. He gives us plays about young romantics, Romeo or Hotspur or Prince Hal, young men who can't control themselves, their emotions yet. Um, uh, he gives us plays about King Lear in his 80s, you know, hanging on, just barely hanging on, um, not really able to sort of manage his wits uh, very well. 
In Othello, he gives us a, a, a man at midlife, 50, you know, still walking around, still virile enough, uh, but not uh, defunct in the passions. Uh, so Shakespeare is very attuned to ages and what they mean. But it does raise a peculiar question because we tend not to talk about this one, right? We have midlife crisis, we have old age crisis, we have teenage problems. But what are the problems? What are the risks? What are the hazards? What are the peculiarities of being 28? 